Okay, so now I have got to the end of all the painting on this particular lantern and I'm doing the final touches, which is to go over the pattern on it with gold, silver and bronze. So I'm going to show you how I do this. All right, I am using, there is Le Franc and Bourgeois a Vitrail Outliner which is a paste, it's paint, but when you actually pipe it out, it forms a raised line, fairly th of sort of fairly thick paint, a paste, as I said. So what you have to do is very, very gently squeeze the very end of the tube just apply a little bit of pressure, otherwise it tends to all come shooting out at once. And I have actually got the tip here resting right on the glass. The lines you can see here already are when I first started this lantern. And I actually draw the pattern out in a grey version of this piece. So the whole design is there on the glass with conveniently raised lines so that when I put the um, when I put the paint on it a bit like painting with numbers in a way every paint colour goes into its convenient box and now I'm just going to do the gold first and then I shall leave that to dry which will take about an hour or so. And no, I'll just do this one. And then I shall do the silver and then the copper. Now that's a very new tube, that one. And it does have a tendency to kind of start shooting paint out at top speed when you least expect it. Very often in new tubes you get air bubbles, which are awkward. So for these little dots here, I'm going to revert to my old tube, which as you see, much shorter. Um, because old tubes tend to slow up a lot. It's more difficult to paint, get the paint out, but on the other hand, you have a bit more control. And that's brilliant for short, sharp little movements like these gold dots but it's not so good if you're trying to do a long thin continuous line then you need something a bit newer where the paint is flowing out a bit more easily this is all extraordinarily tedious i used to do lanterns with so many dots on them <laughs> And it was an absolute pain in the neck to fill them all in. It's worse when I have a pattern and I have to do millions of tiny dots of paint. But fortunately, this Celtic knot one is not one of those. And it's a nice one to paint, lots of different, lots of different uh, colours and so on. And as I go from one lantern to another, I do take photos, but I don't always refer back to them. So it might well be that the gold on the last person's lantern was in a slightly different place. But I don't really think that matters because with handmade, it's nice to have everything very slightly different. So that you, the customer, knows that no one else has got anything quite like yours. I have to squeeze a little bit harder with this old tube because um, the paint doesn't come out as easily as with the new tubes. So in some ways it's easier to work with. 
Well, on the other hand, it puts an awful lot of strain on the fingers because you're squeezing at a certain rate all the time and it can start to get really quite painful. Okay, I'll bring that down again. Okay, so now I'm being very careful here. As I said, new tubes do have a tendency to spit. I'm resting my nozzle on the glass and just gently pulling the tip from point A to point B. And I'm aided by the fact that I do have a raised line underneath it, although the pressure is there to actually stay exactly on top of the raised line. So if you wobble off, ordinarily it wouldn't be particularly noticeable, but it is when you put a line underneath. But still that looks all right. Now I've got the line along the top and along the bottom here to do, but I am going to wait because when you are painting sort of away from any wet places like here, this is relatively easy to do, although I suppose I should try to make it sound harder than it is. It has taken a very long time to learn how to do it smoothly. Um, but it's much easier when everything around is dry. However, when you get to the point where you are painting across lines of wet paint, then the tendency is that they will smudge. So um, I'm going to wait for these lines here to dry before I fill in the rest of it, or at least so that they dry a little bit. And there are plenty of other places to actually put gold on. I could carry on for the whole of this, but I've already done over seven minutes, so I imagine you're getting bored, so I'll take a risk. Now, because the paint next to this line is wet, what I'm doing is actually holding the tip of my, well, the nozzle tip, a few millimetres above the glass this time, so it's not dragging against anything wet on the glass. I'm holding it up, moving my hand very gently across the surface of the table, and squeezing gently, and that's how you get a perfect line. This is it. If you are doing a long, continuous line anywhere, on wet or on dry, that's the way to do it because you get the smoothest lines when your nozzle is just above the glass. However, it is really quite tricky to do. And there is the tendency, as I said before, of the tube to kind of sneeze in the middle of the line. And then everything is ruined because basically you can't just wipe it away because everything else smudges. And there we go. And um, if you wait for it to dry, you're just going to make a mess when you um, try and sort it all out. But they have worked well. It would have been embarrassing if it had sneezed in the middle. And I'm now going to finish this, but we'll carry on with the other colours later and we'll do a speeded up video to have a look at. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the technique shown in this. See you later.